I'm children's author and illustrator Emily Feller and I've been working with Egan Museum to bring you an exciting comics workshop. Egan Museum are unable to run events as they usually would, but they'd still like to encourage you to get creative from home. In the workshop, I'm going to teach you to draw a character step by step, which you'll be able to adapt and make your own. And then I'll give you some tips and inspiration to help you create your own original characters. And after that, you can create your own comic with a bit more help from me. You'll need some paper, a pencil and a rubber, a black felt tip or fine line pen, any dark colour will do if you don't have black, and a comic template which you can make yourself or download from Egan Museum's website. You might also want to use colouring pencils. To start, we're going to draw a mouse character based on simple shapes. Start with your paper landscape and draw a diagonal line for the top of the head. Then a dot for the nose down and to the right. Then join up your shape to make a triangle. Don't worry about getting it right first time because you can change anything you don't like when you go over your drawing in pen. Next, draw a little mark here and two dots which will form a stretched semicircle. Then gradually create your body shape. Everybody's mice will look different and that's what we want so you don't need to try to make it look exactly like mine. Hold your pencil at an angle halfway down your mouse's face as a guide for drawing the eyes. Then draw an eye close to the edge of the face and a larger eye next to it. The eyes are different sizes because we are using perspective. Time for some ears and the left one is bigger. You can draw a shape inside your ears too. Next, a simple straight line for the nose, and most importantly of all, some eyebrows to give your mouse expression. Try experimenting lightly with some different eyebrow styles and see how your mouse looks. To start the legs, draw a simple straight line close to the edge of the body. Then another parallel line. And finish off with a curve below your body line. Draw another leg exactly the same right next to it. You can draw the tail however you like, but I like to extend the body line and then draw a long wiggly line. Try to make the tail slightly thicker at the bottom. Then add two lines in each foot to make them look like paws. This little mouse has been looking after Egham Museum while it's been closed, so I'm going to draw part of a big picture behind, which the mouse has been restoring. Have a think about your mouse's personality and what details you might like to add to the background. Your mouse might have a big net to catch burglars or special glasses to spot fake paintings. 
My mouse has also been cleaning the auroch bones, so I'm drawing a cloth and a bone. If you like, you can draw over your mouse in pen now. Make sure you only draw the lines you need, as some of them were just guides to help us at the beginning. If your eyebrow goes over the edge of the face, make sure you don't draw through it. You might like to use a furry line between the ears. I'm going to use a thinner pen for some details like the eyes. It's important to leave some white when you're colouring eyes to give your character a sparkle of life. When you've finished and you're really sure your ink is dry, you can gently rub out your pencil lines. Make sure you don't crumple your page. And that's your mouse finished, apart from the whiskers which I nearly forgot. If you decide to colour in your mouse, I suggest you use coloured pencils because felt tips might smudge your ink lines. Now it's time for you to think about the kind of characters you're going to create. You'll be coming up with something new that we've never seen before. But you can take inspiration from characters you love. These could be traditional superheroes. But if you come up with a new superhero, you'll have to think of a new name, a look, and powers, which isn't easy as there are so many superheroes already. You might love manga and anime characters. These can be difficult to draw, but you could create a manga-style animal which could be completely made up with a crazy hairstyle. How about myths and legends and adventurous characters? If you like these types of stories, you could create your own mythical world and characters to go with it. I call these real life or diary books. You might like to create a character based on yourself and a comic in which you exaggerate your features and all the funny and embarrassing things that happen to you and your friends. Robots make great characters because you can build them up from simple shapes and you can find fun ways to show what your robot does with screens, buttons and whatever else you like. Finally, you might like to design your own cute or crazy animals. These are your characters so you can create whatever you like. I'm just here to give you ideas. Sometimes it's good to brainstorm for character ideas, then mix your ideas together to come up with something original. On this page, there's a list of character types, such as snail, monster and zombie, and a list of genres, such as scary, myth and superhero. And I've done some sums on the right to mix the ideas together, such as robot plus mouse equals, and alien plus real life equals. 
Grab a new sheet of paper or use your mouse page if you have space and start sketching your ideas. This should be a creative page that doesn't need to look perfect. The important thing is to keep drawing until you have a character you're happy with. Once you've drawn your first character, you could write down its name and some points about its personality. Then when you're ready, think about what other characters you might need to create a great story. Does your character need a friend, an enemy, a pet or a sidekick? Pause me while you create your characters, because next I'm going to talk about comic strips. You can download a comic strip from Egham Museum's website, or just create your own. These are my top tips for creating comics. It's best to start lightly in pencil so you can make changes if you need to. Think the story through first, so you'll know roughly what's on each panel, and how your story ends. Talking of endings, could it finish on an exciting surprise or twist? As it's a comic, you should try to use pictures more than words. And dialogue between characters is a great way to tell your story without too much writing. Which brings us on to speech bubbles. My tip is to write your speech first, nice and clearly, then draw your bubble around it, so you don't run out of space. And finally, you might like to add some sounds to your comic to make some scenes dramatic or funny. For example, if your character can fly, what sound does it make when it takes off? Thank you for taking part and I really hope you've enjoyed the workshop. We'd love to see your drawings, so please ask a parent to post them on social media and tag Egham Museum. And if you'd like to see more of my drawing tutorials, please take a look at my website.